the newborn skeletal system, you need to know that some bones are not completely ossified at birth and that's visible on um, x-ray. The skull sutures are also not fused at birth and that allows for molding during the birth process. In the birth process, the bones of the skull will sometimes override each other to make the, the circumference of the head smaller to allow for delivery. That returns to, they return to their um, regular positions within a few days. Um, but you can see or you can palpate the sutures are not completely closed. You can also palpate the fontanelles. There's a large font anterior fontanelle and there's a smaller triangular posterior fontanelle. We may sometimes see birth injuries involving the head. Um, caput succedaneum is a hematoma or edema of just the scalp. Um, so when you palpate it, it would go across suture lines because it doesn't involve the bone, it involves the scalp. And it just feels like a big soft um, cushiony. It can be a hematoma or it can be swelling. Um, it, it, you will always have a caput with a vacuum delivery. And it's pretty frequent to have caput uh, when babies are born vaginally anyway. Cephal hematoma is when there's a hematoma between the periosteum and the bone tissue. So the covering of the bone, if there's bleeding in between that covering and the bone itself, then you may have a swelling. But what you'll notice, and this is how you can tell if it's cephal hematoma, is that it stops at the suture line because it's just on that particular bone. A subgaleal hemorrhage is bleeding between the skull and the connective tissue of the scalp. How would you be able to tell the difference between this and caput? Um, their scalp will be boggy. Um, it won't be necessarily a, an, a defined collection of blood. The whole scalp may be boggy, but they, this can be arterial and the baby can uh, lose a significant amount of blood. So you're gonna start seeing signs of that blood loss, pallor, tachycardia. Um, and if you're suspecting this, if you measure the head circumference, you may see it increasing. The spine appears to be straight, but it is very easily flexed. Uh, a newborn, a uh, full-term newborn can typically lift their head and turn from side to side at birth. Um, when assessing the spine, if at the sacrum, there's a dimple or a tuft of hair that needs to be referred and assessed, that baby needs to be assessed for spina bifida. Um, that is not diagnostic for spina bifida. It occurs sometimes with spina bifida, so that's something we would assess. We want to see that extremities are symmetric and equally mobile. They should be able to move all of their extremities equally. Um, they, that movement will be random, but they should be moving all of their extremities. So some potential skeletal problems. A fractured clavicle is... Um, possibly the most common birth injury, and that would look like that limb not wanting to move. They're moving everything but one limb. You also might feel crepitus or even feel that fracture. Club foot is a, a malformation of the bones of the foot. Uh, syndactyly, polydactyly, and oligodactyly. Syndactyly is when two or more digits are fused. Polydactyly, they have more digits than five on a limb, oligodactyly, they have fewer digits than five. Um, and developmental dysplasia of the hip is when the hip joint actually is not fully formed and so it will dislocate. We would look for asymmetric gluteal or thigh skin folds. So when the baby's on their tummy uh, naked, you wanna make sure that those folds uh, between the buttocks and the thighs are symmetrical. And then there, there's a set of maneuvers that we can do to determine whether that to, that will determine whether that that joint is dislocating or not. Okay, the next section I believe will be the last, and it's going to be about neurologic uh, changes.